Hello and welcome to the second part of this AE Basics Extra tutorial on creating our animated butterfly text. So you can see that that really is flapping from one side to the other. Okay, so that's our animation of the wing. So that's wing complete. Now we've got the two of them together to create a half flap to show us the words and then we've got the full flap carrying on from there okay so that's working together as one the idea being that at the beginning we're going to reveal the word butterfly very gently before the butterfly takes off and flies away so this represents a single wing so what we can do is we can pre-compose these to sort of squash them together so select them right click pre-compose and call this flapping wing flapping wing Okay, so now we have one flapping wing. And again, we've gone back to custom view here because the item is not now 3D. When we pre-composed it, it ceases to be 3D. So if I take my camera and I try and move around, it says it's a 2D layer. So I need to make sure it's a 3D layer again. And I can just check that it's doing what I want. And look, it's not. It's kind of going in and out. It is not flapping. So that wing kind of looks 3D, but it's not. What we need to do now to keep the 3D look is to click this little button here, which is the Collapse Transformation button. And when you click that, you'll see that the item is now actually moving in 3D. OK, and that's important because when we've pre-composed it, we have flattened it to a 2D layer, and we need to unflatten it to get the full 3D look. OK? So now I'm going to go back from custom view back to my active camera. So there is my wing. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to duplicate this and flip it to give me the wing the other side. So take the wing and then duplicate it, command and control D or edit duplicate. And then the top wing, we're going to right click on it and we're going to go to transform and then flip horizontal. And when you click flip horizontal, you'll see that it gives us a horizontal or a, the mirror image. And when we start to play that through, you'll see that that is moving as a butterfly wing. And if we take it back to our custom view, you can actually see that those wings are moving as they should. And they're actually moving all the way backwards and forwards when we're doing the full fly. So we're getting the butterfly look, which is absolutely brilliant. I'm going to go back to my active camera. The only other thing that I need to do is I need to add in the word text. So we've got butterfly overlapping slightly here. What we could do is take that one at the top and hit P for position and possibly move it over just a tad to give us a bit more space, however you want it to look. And then we need to type in our text layer that's going to go through the middle. So get the text tool, but this time don't choose the horizontal type, choose the vertical type. And then click at the top and we're going to type T. E X T and I'm going to double click that that's black it's perhaps not the ideal color let's just change it its color to something entirely different perhaps let's choose the uh, uh, the red perhaps there okay and then what we need to do is select that and move it into place and possibly we'll double click it and then we can change its font size if we want to make it bigger and we can even play with its vertical scale to make it bigger or smaller, however we want it to look. That will do just for illustration purposes. And of course I want that to be 3D as well, because I want that to move 3D with the other items. So that's now my complete butterfly. So if I select all of those layers and I right click on them, I'm going to pre-compose those and call that butterfly complete. OK. So that now is not 3D. So if I go back to Active Camera and go to Custom View, you'll see that that, take my camera tool and move it around, is not moving. So I need to change it to 3D. But when I pull it through, what's happening to those wings? They're going in and out again. They're not doing properly. So I need to collapse the transforms for those. And now we can see that that butterfly really is 3D. And moving in 3D space, ready to move in 3D space with everything moving properly. And it's important to play between these custom views to make sure that you've got everything in 3D and appropriately collapsed transformations.
to do the final thing which is motion sketch. Right, motion sketch. This is where we're going to have the actual butterfly flying around. So I'm going to go back to my active camera and I'm going to go back to the beginning and I've got my completed butterfly in here. Now at this stage I might decide that the completed butterfly is simply too big anyway so I'm going to hit S for scale and I'm going to reduce its overall size to about that. That's fine. 45% that that will give us a, a fairly decent look. I don't need this um, guide anymore so I'm just going to take my selection tool and get rid of it. In fact I can turn off rulers as well. Don't need, really need rulers and in fact I don't need my reference image anymore either over here so let's just get rid of that unlock it and just delete it. There we go. So I've now got maximum space and I'm ready to start thinking about animating the layer. Now you're going to find a problem when you try and do motion sketch. Motion sketch doesn't actually like 3D layers. Okay so I've got my motion sketch panel. If you've not you have to go to window and find motion sketch and make sure that shows and it brings up this panel over here. Motion Sketch allows you to do very complex animations that you would find impossible to animate by hand. What do I mean by that? Well, to start off for the first few seconds, the butterfly just sits there. But then when the real flapping starts, about six seconds or so, we want this butterfly to really start to move around the screen, as butterflies do in a very almost random looking flight movement. Now to actually keyframe that would be virtually impossible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer and hit P for position and I'm going to click the stopwatch for position because I don't want anything to move up until this point as if the butterfly is pretty much sitting on a, a leaf or on a branch. But when I click motion sketch and I go to start capture, notice I've got a wireframe so it's just going to show a wireframe when I move it around. If I had a background I could show a background. When I click start capture it says oh can't cope with 3D layers. Don't worry about it because we can always do this after the event. So click OK turn off the 3D switch. Now remember that this is now squashed, it's flat, but we can turn it back on again afterwards. So I want to motion sketch from the end. As soon as I click start capture, it's going to start capturing from the very beginning and the current time indicator is going to start from zero. I don't want it to move until it hits this keyframe. But when it hits that keyframe I'm going to start moving my butterfly around. So just have a watch at the current time indicator and you'll see that I won't start actually physically moving it until the current time indicator hits this keyframe. So click start capture. As soon as I click, look at this little target, as soon as I click it will start to play. So let's do that. Don't move it at all until it hits that keyframe. And now when I start moving it around you're going to see that the butterfly is flying around, flitting here and there. You can see the motion path that I'm creating as I'm flying around and it's going to carry on going until the very end of the animation bang it's finished and there's my motion path and when I hit play you see that the butterfly then starts to fly around. Now it looks slightly weird because it's not 3D but I can click the 3D switch back on again and it's now in 3D and it's flying around it's admittedly only in one dimension so if I was to go to my custom view you'll see that it's all in one dimension but it is actually still flying in 3D. So if you want to move it in 3D you're going to have to play around with your path. There's a slightly easier way to fake that sort of look. I'm going to go back to active camera. What we can do is we can actually play with the scale. So if I select S for scale, when the item is closer to us it will appear bigger and when it's further away it will appear smaller. So up to this point we don't really want it to do anything. So I'm going to click scale at that point. And then I can perhaps make it a bit bigger so it looks like it's flown towards us and then I can go a bit further on and then make it a bit smaller so it looks like it's flown away. You get the idea, I can make it sure it looks like it flies away a bit more and then it can come back towards us again a bit more and then a little bit further away again just by faking it by playing with scale and then about towards the end I'm going to take it back to 45%. Okay and then finish at that and then we kind of faked it flying backwards and forwards simply by playing with scale as opposed to actually physically moving the path in 3D. You can move the path in 3D but it's a bit of a chore at this stage. So if I click away and do a RAM preview you can have a quick look. Now obviously 
you might want to spend a bit more time making this whole thing look a bit better but it's a good idea of what we've actually done and we've got a butterfly flying around the only other thing that I think we need to do to make it finish off is to actually rotate it in 3D space a little bit because at the moment it's flat now that's absolutely fine up until the point where it moves I'm going to hit R for rotation but at the point it moves we want it to sort of tilt forwards so we're going to rotate it around the x-axis because we want it to tilt forward if I just move the x-axis you'll see what I mean if I tilt it you'll see that it can tilt forward so there's our butterfly tilting so to start off with we're going to right click and click reset we want it to stay at zero up to this point but once it starts flying we want it to rotate forwards so that it actually flies and we get a real look of that flying so between that point and that point it's just going to go up and rotate and now it's flying backwards and forwards and we can get that real 3D butterfly look and that's how we can create 3D butterfly text I hope you found these tutorials on butterfly text useful and that you've picked up some valuable hints and tips my name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching